MBN started up about the same time as I was getting into the workforce and at that time I left school and started with the Newcastle Sun as a press photographer. In the meantime, Mike had taken a great deal of interest in movie making, especially home movies, uh, from friends of ours who used to have a home movie camera. He'd done a lot of that, but he was a sign writer. Um, and when they were looking for a cameraman, my brother fronted up with some of his home movies and landed the job as NBN's first film cameraman, shooting the news. So there we were, rivals. I was working for one news service, an afternoon daily, and he was working for the evening news on Channel 3. Then later on, after we made our first expedition down the Darling in 1963, I ended up joining him up at NBN and we both worked there together for about two and a half years. I think NBN was a fantastic training ground for people. People like us who had specialist jobs, like I was actually still photographer. I used to also run the film processor. I used to edit the news sometimes, not every night. I wasn't the main editor, but I used to edit the film sometimes. And I also got the chance to work in the studio, behind the studio cameras, do a little bit of audio. And we got a chance to do all these different things. And today it's much more specialised and more difficult to get that kind of all-round grounding experience. The desert would remain taboo to wheels. But in 1966, it is crossed for the first time by vehicles, by the Leyland Brothers expedition during their historic first vehicular crossing of Australia. Mike Leyland leads the party and films its progress. Mike's wife, Pat, carries out her difficult cooking chores under impossible conditions. And for Mal Leyland, navigation with sextant and compass is a daily task. And then when we teamed up and left, and went across Australia and did our big expedition in 1966, which is our first really super successful movie, we never ever went back to working for anyone else. We worked for ourselves. But if it hadn't have been for all that background with NBN, I don't think we could have pulled it off. Day and night, choose Channel 3, cause three's a crowd. When we first started going away and... Mal was shooting documentaries, I was just a background person. I hadn't seen any filming before, so I just sort of hung around the back and learnt my way um, through things. Mike Leyland, the cameraman, wants to film the wet. Mike's brother Mal and his wife Lorraine will record the sounds along this unusual journey to the wet. And in the end Mal said, I'll walk, walk on, do this, do that. First, Lorraine must walk away, signalling to the birds that all danger has passed. Birds seem unable to count, and as long as one person leaves, they generally return within a few minutes. Gradually got a bit more confident, um, and Pat and I got on well with that. We were walking into shots and out of shots. Newcastle, hometown of the Leyland brothers. Here they carry out the extensive planning for their expeditions. Glen in us about 11 years ago and it was a nice little town, everyone was friendly and we were in town for about five years and then decided to come out on this property here and we've started from scratch, there was nothing here at all except bushland and we've built a house and now we've got uh, a nice garden going, a nice orchard and we're trying to be more self-sufficient than what we were before. We bred all of these birds here actually. And our uh, roosters here, we've got three on the property. We've got old granddad over there. I never really learnt to be a carpenter, but out of books I learnt how to do it. Um, used a lot of common sense, and believe it or not, all the early work I did when I was at high school in the technical drawing department all came together, and I was able to figure out how to build things like scissor trusses and put together uh, a stud wall. I think what's good for Lorraine and I here now is that we've arrived in a place that we really wanted to be in 30 odd years ago and that was to do our self-sufficient thing. But we didn't end up here because we planned it, we ended up here by default. But what we've now got is something I would never ever want to leave. We've got the opportunity to live healthy life and I believe live the kind of life that a lot more people should be aspiring to do because we have a very low carbon footprint. We have a solar power system. It provides all of our power needs. 
well most of them anyway. We also have heating with a wood fire and we cook with a wood oven and stuff like that. But it's possible when you've got your own little bit of ground to do that. And it doesn't have to be in suburbia, in fact that's exactly where you don't want it. But for us and a few other people like us, it's working out very well and I can see the future here being one of living hopefully a long life due to the way we're now living and seeing our grandchildren grow up and inherit it. That's what I'm really looking forward to.